Ah, g'day, hi, and welcome. All right. Brr. Got a whole bunch of construction going here across the street. I don't know what they're building, but... Anyway, jam night's over for tonight. And uh, it's been a uh, very, we'll just say, good night. It was very fun. Uh, I'm going to need heat on the way home. There is no doubt about that. Uh, but I'm going to just let my... It's going to get dark there again. We'll maybe put the... GoPro. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if I got a good angle tonight. I, I kind of forgot about my angle. And because of that, <laughs> I uh, may have uh, mistakenly placed the camera. So I don't know if you're going to see my actual violin thing, but uh, as long as you heard the story and everything like that, hopefully nobody behind me that I'm going to hit. Uh, really good night. There was like nine people signed up tonight. I think two of them left uh, whatever, but it was just like uh, it was a full house tonight. A lot, of, a lot of really good acts tonight too. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, the last one there, uh, that girl Anna, she's got a great voice. Her, <laughs> she's very cute too. Uh, she was went up on the drums. I was going to jump up on the drums, but uh, she she beat me to the stage. So it's like okay, well it's fine. She she made it there. Um, and. Uh, yeah, she, she uh, we'll just say, <laughs> she, was, she, was got, she, she was hitting the drum or whatever, it was like, just, you know, I guess she didn't really know how to play drums, so whatever. but she was having fun, and uh, when she got off stage, she was like, you're just like Tommy, and he was like, far off, <laughs> it was really funny, she got a kick out of it anyway, uh, but what a good, I want to do a duet with that girl, uh, I don't know what song it'd be, probably, I'd like to do Take a Picture with her, uh, you know, it's Cheryl Crow song, I haven't asked her yet, I don't know her well enough, so. Uh, but give it time. She did, did one of her originals tonight. Very good. Very good. There was uh, a French song tonight. There was uh, a little bit of everything. Somebody's still awake. <laughs> All right. There was um, there was quite a bit of instruments on the stage there. Uh, uh, I had a little bit of a sing-along. Not too bad. Uh, I uh, didn't know what I was going to be able to get away with tonight. Uh, I tried to push a third song on the guitar, but uh, not push it. But I was just like, I see my. Well, is that three songs? Or is that just two? You know, I was like, uh, but I was like, there's nine people that need to go up. So, uh, uh, but I stayed well within my 15 minutes. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, no problem uh, with, with with that kind of that kind of thing. Where ugh. okay, I got a new set. Wait till I get around this terrifying corner because that's quite the ditch there. So we're, the ditch here is basically used to be the old train track. So <laughs> when you go off the road, you're off the road. Uh, they, they've propped it up, but you're still off the road. Uh, I'm sure, I have everything with me, so I didn't, didn't lose anything. Uh, but the haunting story of the 1713 Stradivari, I, I didn't want to go too long, so I had to kind of skip through it a bit. But uh, it, it, uh, it, it went well. Uh, enjoyed it. They, th they thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, I was talking to that, that uh, other girl that plays the fiddle. I kind of called her out in the, <laughs> in, on stage. Like, oh, there's a real fiddle player right there. There she is, you know. Uh, but she didn't go up tonight. Uh, I don't know why. She said she was, I asked her if she was going to go up. She said, ah, I don't know. This might, be, it might be just too many people, right? Uh, sometimes it gets like that. You, sometimes you just want to sit and listen, you know. Um, sometimes you want to get up and play. Uh, that, that's kind of uh, here, which is kind of uh, the way things kind of roll sometimes, you know. Sorry, I just got to check so make sure everything is in my violin case. I'm pretty sure there is. Okay, camera, clock. Pretty sure the violin's in there. <laughs> uh, no doubt about that. All right, so I'm back going again. Very, very soon as of now. So, how was it tonight? Uh, the crowd was, there was a lot of crowd tonight. Uh, um, I uh, gotta say, uh, the talent in there is unbelievable. There's some harmonica in uh, the harmonicas. Uh, like I say, there was a lady did a, like a French tune. It was really funky. I don't know what the tune was. I don't know what the tune was. I don't speak French very well. So. Uh, let alone understand what they were. People who seem to know what it was. It was one of those uh, Quebecois heritage songs. So, but it was, it was good. It was something good. I don't know what the lyrics were, but maybe. 
whatever they were, but it was pretty fun. Uh, there was lots of guitars. Uh, the host is, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, partner. She did show up to a little bit later. She had a little bit of little problems getting started, but, uh, you know, she had a bass, she had an electric guitar, an acoustic guitar, keyboard, kind of brought out a little drum there, you know, it was like a little bit of everything. Uh, so by the time they got all that set up, uh, he was almost done the set, but, yeah, well, maybe next time. Um, and then there was, uh, what's called, uh, a few other people that showed up, but they didn't go off, uh, that Claire lady, uh, the one that was the host there a couple of weeks ago there. I, I, want, I want to get a video of her playing, because she plays really well. And she, uh, she, she, I don't know, she gets kind of shy. If you ask her if she's going to go up there, she's like, no, 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 no. And then she disappeared. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I guess, well, it is a Wednesday night, so a lot of people probably have to work with her and stuff like that, too. You have to factor all that stuff in, right? Um, the, uh, the host was good. Again, a little bit of a shaky start. Uh, Intergalactic Space Hippie showed up with a Stratocaster tonight. Uh, he sang about uh, how we got mushrooms in uh, BC. Uh, very interesting song. And he had a drum beat with him tonight. I don't know, the guy's just so amusing. His name is Derek? Derek, I think. Daryl or Derek or Darren? Something along that line. So I'll have to look at the footage of him. I talked to him a little bit. Like, he's really burnt out. Like, he, like if there's a poster child for why you shouldn't do drums, it's him. <laughs> Now, mind you, I think he had an accident a few years back, so he's a little slow for that. But I don't think it would have mattered if he had an accident or not. This guy's done a lot of drugs in the news. I mean, he's thinking about Magic Mushrooms and LSD. Like, each week it's a, a different song about a different drug he, he took or whatever. It's kind of funny. Your typical 60s type of hippie, right? So, uh, but it was really good. Uh, there's a girl. I wish I would have gotten more songs from her. She really rocked the place. She did three police songs in a row and just really rocked the place that she did. Uh, it was a sing-along in all three songs. She did Walking on the Moon, uh, Roxanne, and what was the other one? Uh, Message in the Bottom. But the way they played it, I don't play it like that. I don't play it like that at all. And I'm like, wow, that was, it was all finger style. It was like, okay, well, maybe that's closer to uh, what Andy Summers actually plays on the guitar. I've always played it a bit more rock and rollish. But again, it, it, it's just, it's interesting. So I did I Remember You from Skid Row. It seemed to go over quite well. Uh, and, uh, I had a few looks in the audience there. You can tell that the ladies were enjoying it, yeah. And then I did uh, Any Way You Want It. I, I was, the problem was, I was the second act that night, uh, uh, you know, a musical act that night. It might have been a little bit too early to pull that one out, but I got a bit of a sing-along on, on the second one. Uh, everybody enjoyed the uh, violin. Uh, you know, they enjoyed that, so I was like, okay, well, that was interesting. So I got two more violins to bring out. So uh, I got to play that nice T3 Taylor, that thing. Uh, well, sorry, not T3, but that Taylor guitar. Uh, I don't know if that was Greg's guitar or the host's guitar, but... I think they both have a similar tailor. But I gotta say, that guitar, okay, uh, I thought it was one of those ones without a dot marker, but the dot markers are on are really small, so you gotta kind of look at the fingerboard when you're not used to a guitar like that. But I hate to use the expression, it played like butter. Uh, I hate I hate to say that, but man, I was right up with the 12th fret, it played better. It was better set up than my Ibanez. Now, the guy that went on after me, he had the same Ibanez as AEL 10, or maybe it's the newer version of it. The, uh, not AEG, but whatever Ibanez is calling it now. Uh, only his was a, like a sunburst rather than a, a blueburst like mine. I like blue. Uh, poor guy kept on plugging himself accidentally, but uh, he was really good as well. He got the bass player up there, the drums. I, got a, I try to get a little bit of everybody. Uh, the problem is, is there's so many good acts that I love. Uh, if you just put all, you know, catch all everybody's all three songs, I only get about an hour of battery power out of GoPro. So I really got to, you know, kind of ration it out. Like, obviously, I take up 15 minutes of that hour, so I have to watch out for that too. Uh, you know, like, I, I want, you know, I, I like going up early, but then the crowd's not quite watching it. Now, when I got there, there was, like, four people in the bar. I was like, oh, no. It's like, when I left, it was all full of, it was foggy. It was really 
foggy when I left, so I thought, well, maybe nobody will be out today if it's too foggy, you know, like that. But I'm right along the river here, right along the Gatineau River, at almost probably 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, very late for me on a Wednesday night. I usually leave it. But it's so hard to leave. I had four drinks tonight, and my cursed violin came out, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, it's, you just don't want to leave. Like, I mean, uh, it's, it's so good. It's just so good. Uh, a lot of socializing tonight, for sure. I talked to them. Like, the place was packed. There had to be over 60 or 70 people in there. I mean, it's a small place. It's still a great place. Uh, plus, it was steak night. Man, that looked good. One thing I hate about uh, when you perform is you can't eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, you can, but then you can't sing. You can't belt out dudes on a full stomach. Uh, some people can. I can. Uh, I have a hard enough time, but, you know, uh, trying to run on a you know, non-full stomach. Got a trucker again. Thanks to all the truckers who are working hard late at night here. You know, musicians and truckers and drunks. That's the only thing on the road at this hour of the morning. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. So I tell the story of the haunted uh, or the uh, cursed 1713 Stradivari. I had a heckler in the audience. That was the girl that really she she sung, sang so well. Um, she really 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 she really uh, she really owned the stage. I gotta say she was. Uh, but yeah, she's like, you need a waiver or something. I forget what she said, but anyway, I was talking to her after, you know, good jokes, stuff like that. And uh, I, I, I only realized after I started telling the story where the camera was, so I don't think it caught me because I was on the far right mic. And the thing is, is I, I put on a bit of a theatrics, like when I went to play the violin, uh, I, I pretended I was like, shaking, my knees were shaking and the bowl was shaking and I was putting on like, you know, like oh my god guys, this is, you know, this thing's cursed, come on, give me a break, you know what I mean, like, it's like, I put on a bit of a show, you know what I mean, uh, because you're an entertainer first, and, yeah, people found it funny, you can tell they were enjoying it, um, and uh, uh, like that, that Anna girl, she's like, oh, you've got a good stage presence, I said, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, so does she, she has a great stage presence, plus she's very easy on the eyes, there's nothing about that, she's such a cute little thing. But, um, yeah, you know, like, there's a lot of talent there. You know? uh, people that play, they sing. There was another lady um, that got up and sang, and she sang really well. Uh, it was the lady that was playing the drum, uh, because I saw the host from a couple of weeks ago. He was in there. He brought his guitar in and everything like that, but he didn't go up. I think they were. They said they were having like a bit of a jam session upstairs, warming up or whatever. But they never came down. And uh, she, it's the guy that plays the accordion. I guess that it's his wife or whatever. But she sang very, very well. You know, more mellow, more laid back or whatever. But uh, she sang very, very well. And then, uh, of course, that Anna girl went up and crashed the mic. You know, uh, and they sang the song together, and it was, it was really good. You know. Um, so. Yeah, I, I tell the story, and of course, tonight when I printed out the story to read it off, uh, my printer died. So that's the first thing about my cursed violin, is my printer died. The second thing was uh, when I went to order my third Coca-Cola of the night, uh, I ended up, uh, I ran out of Coca-Cola, so I told the bartender, I know why you ran out, it's because my cursed violin. I said, oh, I was like, what, what else you got? He goes, 7-Up uh, Mountain Dew, or 7-Up or, uh, or uh, Canada Dry. Iced tea. Okay, well, iced tea. You know, I just seven up. I, I like seven up, but like you can only drink like one of those a week. <laughs> you know. Um, so I ended up ordering two iced teas tonight. So I drank four drinks today, all non-alcoholic. Um, but again, you know, it's a long drive home. It's a scary highway. It's a uh, neighbor's highway. And uh, plus, you know, if I get stopped or something, I definitely don't want to. But, uh, but uh, great night, uh, lots of talent. I think there was just a little bit too many people for everybody to get up there tonight. But uh, yeah, so I kind of, you'll probably hear me on uh, the GoPro kind of trying to sneak in that a, a fourth song. But uh, no, I was too busy tonight. I couldn't do it. You know, I respected that for sure. You know, like, uh, you don't want you don't want to fight with people or like that. Like, well, we weren't arguing. Like, oh, is it two songs or three? You know. You know, 
you know, does, does the first one count? Like, does the violin thing count as a song? I, I guess it does. So, so you know, I was hoping to get away with it, but I didn't. Uh, but that's what next week's are for. But I kind of planned for that tonight anyway. Where, um, you know, I'd only do the, the two songs. So I did uh, I Remember You and um, Anyway You Wanted from Journey. Uh, but next week, what I want to do is I'm going to keep this format where uh, rather than performing three violin songs, uh, what I'll do is I'll just perform one song per violin. And uh, although I did two on the line at violin, I only did one tonight on the, on the Stradivari. And uh, next week I bring out the horn Snyder, so that one's going to be interesting. Uh, but what I'm going to do as well is, uh, you know, do the guitar thing too, just so I can keep moving those songs along. But one thing I picked up tonight, I'm going to have to bring out some more police songs. Uh, because, uh, yeah, that went over so well with the crowd. You know? uh, the the uh, 1983-1984, the um, Synchronicity album, probably the best and most popular uh, police album that was ever put out. Uh, there's a lot of great songs on that. And I'd like to do King of Pain on there. Uh, but the thing is, is everybody plays a finger style, so they play a more mellow version of it and more kind of like jazzy version of it. But it's still good. You know, it's still good. So even if I bring in a more rock version of it, um, I think that's pretty good too, you know what I mean? Because uh, people like it. Like, they, they like it. It's just, it's just it's a little out of uh, what everybody else is doing. But that's also what keeps it good too, right? Is when you're doing... Thing, what everybody else is doing, something ever so slightly different. Now, the song I was going to play tonight, you know, trying to squeeze in, was uh, the Dark Side from uh, uh, Eddie and the Cruisers movie, which was uh, John Cassidy and the Beaver Brown Band. I was going to try to sneak that one in. That one's a pretty raunchy song early in the night, though. Uh, but getting on the stage, one thing about intergalactic space hippie that I worry about is he tends to clear the bar on you. But, no, people stay put. They stay put because it was the first act. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to be about an act or two separation from them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, just for, you know, sake, uh, the sake of uh, not having to have the bar clear out on me. But, no, everybody kind of stayed put tonight. I don't know if he'll be back next week. Uh, but he, you know, like people are getting used to him or whatever and stuff like that. Tonight he was he was actually quite tolerable. He, he wasn't too crazy out of the, you know, he wasn't doing a 15 minute song. He, he did three songs in 15 minutes. Although they all kind of sound the same, uh, he didn't go on like for 22 minutes doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Uh, the guy's like, you know, he's he's trying, he try he tries. You know? But I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have any confidence or belief that they can do stuff like. This. This guy's up there doing that having the time of his life. If he can do it, anybody can do it. And you know what? People clap. They, they, you know, they, they're like, okay, well, you know, they admire that he goes up and does it. And he's a likable guy and all that. I'm not, I'm not slagging on the guy whatsoever. But it just shows you that you got no excuse. If he's going to go up and do it, you got no excuse. We doggy, it's raining. So the song I want to do next week, if I can only, if I can only squeeze in two songs. Because I'm getting backlog. That's the problem when you only get to play three songs. If you can squeeze in the fourth one, it's not so bad. But it really depends. I think as the weather is going to get worse, I think more people are going to actually come out. Uh, why? Because there's nothing else to do, right? Uh, unless the weather's really bad. That's only, like, if it's going to be like, uh, you know, like freezing rain or something. No, I'm not going to risk my life just for a jam night. But uh, I hope not to miss a jam night because I enjoy it so much. It's, it's, it's my livelihood. Or, well, not livelihood, but my, uh, it's what I, you know, it, it's my social event of the week, so to speak. Um, especially this time of year. You know, it's so easy to get cabin fever this time of the year. Uh, you start getting locked up inside because it's raining and gloomy all the time. Uh, you know, I'm in the wood detail trying to get all the stove wood for cut. I mean, tomorrow I gotta go at it pretty good, and then Saturday I gotta go work. Uh, you know, I gotta get, you know, the stuff from my boss all, uh, you know, uh, the, the raised bed gardens, I gotta get those things all filled in before it snows and the ground freezes and stuff like that. So, you know, you're always busy. You're always busy, but the 
nice thing is is that uh, this is such a nice escape because it's so fulfilling it sticks with you you know and the social aspect of it I love you know the social aspect of it, of it I love uh, the people, yeah, they're nice. Uh, nobody's talking politics or anything like that when, when I'm there, uh, and that's not what I want to do. You know, like that's that's not the place for for me. Uh, probably most people there would be on the opposite. But then again, you never know. You know, you think everybody's on the opposite side of the aisle for you, but you never know. Uh, the bass player that was there tonight, man, he was good. He was really good. And uh, you know, like he was very very funky. Uh, he was really good. Uh, more of a blues guy, but, you know, uh, maybe at some point, oh yeah, it's starting to get dark, I know, I know it's already dark out because it's night, but, uh, that looks like a really dark sky, I think, it's raining just a little bit, but I think I could be running into some fog pretty soon, as long as I'm not beside the river, it's okay, <laughs> at least this way we crash, only crash into trees, and you don't end up going off the 300 foot cliff to the, to the right of me. So I, one thing I gotta remember: if I crash, crash to the left, not to the right, because you die when you go to the right. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot of cars pulled out of the, the Gatineau River here. But yeah, I can see that overcast kind of overcast. Uh, the jazz lady, I asked her tonight if she's going up. She's just no, oh, she's just there for a bit. Very, very lovely looking lady. Uh, I gotta say that too. Uh, she's wearing a nice dress tonight. And everything. That's, yeah, it's a normal. You know, it's a normal. It's probably taken, but still. <laughs> Always be polite, because you never know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I gotta say, you just never know what you're gonna get there. Today was pretty straightforward. There wasn't, um, other than the bass players showing up, uh, there wasn't really anything that was, um, oh wow, hey, I haven't seen that before kind of stuff. Um, the, uh, the thing is, is that, uh, but everything was really good. Everything's always really good. You know? like, it's always really enjoyable. Uh, there was a little bit of a loose jam there. You know, kind of, you know, with some harmonicas. There was a couple of harmonica players tonight. Uh, both were really good. Both were really good. Again, a little rough getting started, you know, like uh, setting up the mic and stuff like that. You know, because sometimes people walk on stage halfway through the song, right? So it's like, you got to set them up while they're there. And it, it can, yeah, whatever. Uh, but let me tell you about that Taylor. That Taylor, uh, that Taylor played nice up at the 12th fret. I was like, that's smooth. That is a nice guitar. You know? uh, don't get me wrong, uh, my Ibanez plays well, but it's not refined like that. that that's, that's for sure. That was a very smooth guitar. Uh, I didn't want to thrash on it too much, considering what it is. You know, I obviously don't want to be breaking strings, and I don't want to be scratching the, you know, like... That's why I bring out my guitar, because I thrash the crap out of the guitars. Uh, that's what I love my Ibanez for, is that, you know, like, it's... Uh, you can just thrash the crap out of it and not feel guilty, and it'll hold up. I mean, if you, if you kind of... Well, I don't know if you really picked up on it or not, but my, uh, that D Markney pickup that I have in there, that thing, I mean, the, the wood part of it is just completely filed away from the pick on it. How that guitar isn't scratched to, to, to oblivion, I don't know. But it seems like the pickup is just high enough to hit the pick, but the, the top of the, my Ibanez and it gets an acoustic, uh, my pick doesn't hit it. Uh, why? I don't know. It could be just my picking technique, whatever. But, uh, yeah, the, uh, that, that, that's a really nice playing, uh, I mean, that's a guitar I would bring out only if I was being paid, but it was nice to have uh, the full electronics and stuff like that. It did sound pretty sweet, so I'm going to be interested to see how that came out on the, um, uh, came out on the GoPro, plus the idea that uh, it's a guitar I'm not used to. Uh, I mean, one guitar to the next, there's not really that much of a difference, but it is a difference that when you get used to playing on a certain guitar, especially that thing at newer strings, in mind, <laughs> that, that's a lot of problem I have is my strings are very, very old. Uh, but there's also the, uh, uh, what the heck? What the hell is that? Uh, it's like a freaking uh, beacon. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a hill right there. There's a, it's like a lighthouse, but only on the top of the hill. 
a beacon because uh, there's been a few helicopter crashes here over the decades. I think two of them, you, they, they hit the top of this hill and they have to fly too low. So there's a beacon tower there that uh, they don't want to hit. So. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, getting back to what I was saying, uh, tonight, great night. Uh, it was nice to play that, that other acoustic, but again, i got to be careful with these other people's guitars for sure. You know, especially when they're that expensive and stuff like that. I really don't like using other people's stuff, let, let, you know, unless they necessarily have to. But again, to, to lug out two instruments when you're not getting paid and stuff like that, it's not really, um, not really something that, uh, you know, you want to, uh, you, you want to do, you know what I mean? Like, you just, uh, they, it's too much to manage, you know, sitting in the audience with instruments is not the same as being on stage with instruments. Uh, so one thing like the, the violin is easy to take care of, uh, whatever. The guitar takes up an entire table, you know what I mean? Uh, you put it on the floor, people trip over it, you leave it on the table, sometimes people knock things off the table. So the guitar is not so bad, but if I want to shred, uh, I have to bring my own guitar. And the song I want to do next week, like I say, will be a Queen song, and that one is a bit of, if I can, if I can pull it out of the hat well enough. The idea is, again, it's kind of like trial balloon things, just to see if people like it or not, you know what I mean? If they like it, you could add it to your set list. Uh, the other thing is, is that, uh, you know, uh, if, if you can get four songs in, that's great. If you can, you pick three that you think are going to resonate, but do whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, it's just, it, 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 you, you sometimes want to stay with the theme of the night, so what I do is I pick uh, six or seven tunes um, to uh, oh, another track and trailer. And thank you guys for keeping the world moving. All the truckers out there. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, the, the thing is, is that. Uh, yeah, if you can only do three songs, pick six. Uh, maybe even pick nine songs to pick from, so that if you have a moderate night, a hyper night, like I was, uh, my songs are kind of hyper. I mean, I, I'm always more hyper than most people that go up there, because uh, I go up early, you know what I mean? So near the end of the night, my songs would probably do better. Uh, but when you're, you know, the first or second act up there, uh, and I do that on purpose too, just so if I'm, if I'm gonna stay late or not, you know what I mean? I don't know if I'm gonna stay late. But usually, uh, just so I know I'm gonna get up there, I usually don't go past the fourth or fifth position on there if I can help it. Because I remember some jam nights I used to go to, there would be like 18 people on the list. There's no way you can get 18 people doing 15 minute songs. You know I mean? You're just not gonna get 18 people on the night. Even if you start at like eight o'clock. You know, it's like, it's just, uh, they, there they start at about nine. The host will do about a half an hour set, uh, maybe a little longer if, uh, if uh, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people signed up. within the 15 minutes anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But it's usually three songs or 15 minutes, right? And you really want to respect that. You really do. Uh, so tonight, yeah, I, I wasn't able to jam in that, that, that first song. But I'm okay with it. Because I like how the... Uh, I like how uh, 
the, uh, the, 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 the the story went. It was really, it's, it's a different dynamic to add to a show. Like I say, remember, when you're on stage, you're uh, an entertainer first, right? So, entertain when you're up there. You know, storytelling is a part of entertaining. Uh, storytelling with a haunted violin or a cursed violin, that's, uh, you know, that's fun too. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with the electric. The electric, uh, I'm going to have to come up with something really cool with that. Uh, that one's going to be strange to uh, pull out. My uh, 1920 Procop violin, that one, the next broke on it. So that one's not coming out for a long time, we'll just say that. Uh, the other one is um, that little three-quarter scale one. I'm not going to bother bringing that one out. Um, not that I don't like it or anything like that. It's just, you know, well, four violins, showcasing four violins. And if I never play violin on stage again, well, at least I can say I done it. You know what I mean? Um, I really... Uh, the stuff I do because it's unique on the violin, I know a lot of my audience doesn't really like it. Uh, but, you know, when I'm in front of people, I'm obviously uh, doing something different.
big sound stage kind of bikes, right? Not uh, your typical omnidirectional uh, SM58 kind of bikes. Um, and uh, yeah, so obviously, uh, I don't know if it picked up as well as I would have liked. It seemed to go okay. I mean, I got an SM58 at home, and that's what I practice with. And it seemed to go okay. It seemed to pick it up. Now, mind you, this violin isn't as loud as my my, uh, my head violin. It has more of a sweet tone to it, and it's a lot quieter. But uh, I experimented on my brother with my violins, and he said that one, he said, was weird because I got him to go stand in the woodshed while I stood at the door of the house, which was, you know, probably about 50, 60 feet away by where he was standing. And he says that one, he says, it just, it just, it's quiet, but it's just, it, it, the sound just travels right through you. And he said he couldn't believe, like, it's so quiet, but yet it's right there, even that far back. And that's kind of how this one is. So under the ear, it doesn't seem loud, but it's clear and it, it projects like a Stradivari should, right? Even, even a copy of a Stradivari. Um, you know, I told a joke tonight, yeah, Stradivari's are worth millions of dollars. I got this one for 75 bucks. A few people laughed. A few people caught what I said, you know. Um, you know, I got really good, but maybe the reason why I got a good deal on this is because it's cursed, you know what I mean? Uh, again, I had to shorten up the story, so maybe I'll get my printer working again and be able to tell this story at a later date at a different place. But once you do the story once, you're not going to do it again. You know, I like I like something new each time. Um, so next week, like I say, if I can belt out a tune on the, uh, the Hornsteiner violin, uh, that might be really cool as well. I was going to try I Remember You uh, on the violin, playing and singing. And I was working on it as well this week, whatever, and it sounds cool while you play it on the violin and sing it at the same time. Just kind of like chord progression patterns, nothing really fancy. Uh, but it just, it, it wasn't there. It just, it was an interesting thing, but not in a room that size with that many people. You needed the acoustic, you needed the drive out of the acoustic guitar to pull that one off. And, um... I don't know if that's the first time I ever played that song live. It might have been. It might have been. Uh, I don't think it was. I mean, I, when I was growing up, I was a huge Skid Row fan. I mean, uh, I must have played it in front of other people, but I don't think I ever did it by myself. That's the thing. I don't think I ever did that song by myself, but I was like, I always wanted to play that one anyway, so I'm like, well, why not, right? You know? You live once, you might as well belt it out. Will I pull it out again? Maybe. I mean, the audience reception was pretty good with it. Uh, but a lot of these songs, too, I want to perform them once and then put those songs to bed, too, because not that you don't like the song, but it's like, okay, I've played it to death over the years, you know. I want to bring in new stuff. Uh, but the problem when you bring in too much new stuff, nobody knows it, you know. Um, I don't know if there was a sing-along in that, because I couldn't hear anybody over me screaming and yelling in the mic. Uh, but I could hear people singing the Journey song, uh, and everybody knew the melody. You know, they knew the melody. I think they sang the second chorus and the third chorus, so... Uh, and I heard a few woo-hoos during the, uh, the, the kind of makeshift solo that I did. Which is really, I just go up uh, to the second octave and, and do the chord progression with a little bit of a diddly on the E. Nothing fancy, but it just, it fits. It's kind of like turning a guitar into a mandolin for uh, a couple of bars, you know what I mean? Better slow this down now that I'm almost home. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's one of those things where... Um, it's not raining. No, it's still raining. It's still light raining. Um, but it, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, it was really good. Um... You can just see the look on the women's face when you play it, though. Like, I looked around, I was looking around the audience, and just, you know, just take quick glances, eh? and they get so into it. It's really cool, you know, it's, like, it's really cool. Uh, and it's just like, uh, that's why I don't like playing a lot of ballads live. I really don't. But some ballads, it's like, yeah, just see what happens. You know, just see what happens. You know, see who likes it. The girls always like the ballads. That's that, that, that type of thing, you know. Um... I also, uh, you know, I was hoping, I, again, that early in the night I wasn't going to get anybody up uh, dancing and singing, but there were people up dancing and singing. If I would have been in, say, like the fourth or fifth spot, uh, probably would have, the audience would have been warmed up enough to, to, to do it. Um, who 
was after me. Oh yeah, the guy after me. Yeah, he was. He was pretty cool. Uh, except for he kept unplugging himself, poor guy. Uh, but he, 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 you know, the show goes on. He kept her going. You know, at some point, you know, he plugged it in, carried on. You know, the show goes on. Things like that happen. Um, I remember seeing Kim Mitchell live. And Kim Mitchell actually incorporated this into his act. If you've ever seen him live, you'll know what I'm talking about. Where they were playing live one night, and the power went out. And he did this kind of funny sneaking off the stage, hiding behind the guitar move. And the audience just loved it because it was so funny. So he incorporates it into his show that the power goes out. Uh, there's a video he did called Rock and Roll Duty. And in that video, when the power goes out, I was like, oh, oh, I, I tripped over the mic cord. I, I tripped over, I, I shorted out the mic. Whoops, whoops. And so that, he actually does that live. And just so you know, because it's just one of those things that it was funny at work that he kept doing it, right? Uh, and it adds to the show, because people remember funny stuff like that, you know? And it's always good. It's always good. Uh, so, yeah, throw in little twists in your show if you can. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, just, just don't be afraid to do that. Uh, but if I could do that Queen song next week, uh, I'm not going to tell you what song it is. I'll let you guys guess. But if I could pull it off, I think it's going to be really, really, really cool. If I could pull it off. And that's kind of one of those things where if you pull it off, and you're only you're going to play one violin song and then two, um, two acoustic songs, um, yeah, you could really, really, really rock the place. You know what I mean? No, it's not Rocky. I'll, 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 I'll just tell you that, but no, it's not that one. Although that one does really, really well. Uh, but you know, that's something you pull out the electric guitar for, you know what I mean? So, um, one of the things I am trying to do uh, with the Jam Nights, uh, quite simply put, and more rain down my road here, is um, bring out... When I get back to just playing the guitar, like, who knows, maybe the electric fiddle might become a staple of the act, too. Because I do need to get practice on that. I do need to get out in front of people. Uh, I do need to find out what works, what doesn't work. So, yes, the audience is going to be my guinea pig. Jam nights are about guinea pig. Um, when do I get my next gig, my, my full-size gig? I don't know. But, like, all these people that go on stage, they're working musicians, a lot of them. Uh, you know, I'm going to start talking to where do you play, you know, where do you go, you know, how hard is it to get in, in there, what do they want there, you know, um, like Greg, uh, hell of a guy, I mean, great music, phenomenal musician, uh, you know, he's into jazz, blues, uh, rock, uh, R&B stuff, you know, that type of stuff, uh, he only plays a handful of places, but it's enough to keep him going, plus his, um, you know, he's, uh, I guess, a uh, music teacher at <laughs> my, my old elementary school. That's really cool. Um, small world, right? Guy from Australia is teaching at a school I, you know, I went to when I used to pick my nose as a kid. But then again, I only stopped picking my nose last week, so, uh, you know, whatever, right? Uh, <laughs> too much information, I know. I know. Uh, but uh, you, get, you get what I'm getting at. Um, It's, you talk to these people, find out what they're doing, how they're doing it. Uh, if I get this Claire lady up on stage, because uh, she hosts Sue, she, like, I mean, she does gigs all the time. And um, I just want to, I just want to get a video of her so you guys can see the talent this lady has. You know? um, and, uh, and she's easy on the eyes too, she's really friendly, really nice. Um, and uh, the thing is, is that... Like, these people, they might not play all the time, but even the waitress, uh, you know, I, I introduce myself to all the bartenders, the waiters, the waitresses. I tend to like to know the staff. Uh, I find you get a better connection with places when you, you know, socialize, you know what I mean? And not only that, I find when you treat people, like, I mean, I get to the point now where I walk up to the bar, they know already, they already know what I want, you know what I mean? Uh, so that's nice. They, you know, I, I like that. Mind you, a small place like that, it's easy to remember faces from the bartenders and stuff like that. But 
But I, I saw, like, her, she put an announcement on the uh, Cafe 1870 website of who was hosting. So I just checked out, you know, I, I do that what they call Facebook stalking, you know. Oh, well, I'll check out uh, some of these people's uh, Facebook pages just to see what they got going on there and how they do things, you know, with the musicians. And, well, this girl, like, I mean, she's got pictures of her playing keyboard on massive stages at, like, Blues Fest and stuff. But, yet, again, some of the best musicians you've never, I haven't heard her play yet, but some of the best musicians you've never heard of play here. I mean, Blues Fest, it's the 10th largest musical music festival in the world. The 10th largest, the Ottawa Blues Fest. Now, mind you, it's backed by big money uh, as a tourist attraction, sure. But let that sink in. If you play on any one of the 10 stages there, uh, that's something to brag about. And here she is serving my serving me drinks. You know what I mean? Serving people drinks. You know what I mean? How, like, it's just... How? You know what I mean? How do these people do this? How can they not be so so much, you know... How can they not be known to the world? You know what I mean? Again, again, I've never heard her play, so maybe she's no good. But to be at Blues Fest, to be on stage at Blues Fest, you got to be pretty good. you got to be somebody that people want to see. You gotta be somebody that people are willing to spend spend sixty bucks for a ticket to you know like fifteen hundred for a week pass or pass or whatever it is that they it might be three hundred bucks for the week whatever your blues fest uh, festival tickets are uh, but basically it's it's now done as Ottawa tourism it overtook the jazz festival which there's always been a lot of fighting over that uh, where you know the, the blues festival is not a blues festival anymore. You got rock bands, rap bands. It's just they should just call it the Ottawa Music Festival. But the first few ones I, I went to, uh, George Thorogood was always like the headliner. Uh, I've seen George Thorogood so many times. I love George Thorogood. It's on an awesome show. Um, but when it moved to the new venue on uh, uh, the Brenton Flats, right beside the War Museum, uh, it uh, really gained in size. We'll see. Uh, again, 10 stages, uh, you know, acts playing at the same time. It, it's just all kinds of venues. So they can't really call it a blues fest anymore because it, it's hardly any blues played there. Now, I mean, they got guys like Buddy Guy or, uh, you know, whoever playing there. I think even B.B. King played there. Uh, again, a huge, huge, huge festival. And when you get locals that are, you know, it's like, my God, you were there? You know, mind you, there's acts from morning till night. So, again, some of the best musicians in the world that you've never heard of are playing at this little bar. <laughs> you know, we're serving drinks there. Uh, that's pretty incredible. Um, now, musician, musicianship is a, is a strange thing where uh, it's, you don't judge musicianship just on one aspect of performance. There's a lot of areas to judge on, uh, such as, okay, the playability, the audience participation, uh, the, the way the person uh, works with the crowd. I tend to like to be a crowd motivator. I tend to like to uh, want to get the crowd involved. It's really hard to do sometimes in three songs, and then you get this lady that walks up there, does three police songs, sing along full songs three songs in a row you know like wow talk about knocking it out of the park you know what I mean uh, she, she owned the room you know what I mean it was brilliant I loved it um, it was, it's just wow you know like, you get these this talent you know uh, but she probably I, maybe she's a working musician maybe not I, I didn't get a chance the next time I see her I'll, I'll ask her you know, uh, you know are you a working musician or do you just do the jam dates once in a while and whatever but a lot of these musicians here, they know each other quite well, and they jam with each other in the off time, you know what I mean? So that's why their performances are so good, too. Chances are, maybe that's the only three songs she knows. Uh, not all the time, but you get that. Sometimes that happens. Uh, you know, or they have a repertoire of maybe 12 songs. So, you know, each jam night they do this three, that three, or the other three, right? And it could, it could go either way on you. So, when you got something like that, it, it can uh, sometimes uh, come off pretty brilliantly when, when you're that well rehearsed, but how would they do on a, say, a three-hour night, you know? Uh, how would they do on a, you know, in front of a crowd of 15,000 people? Um, 
Like, I already know how I do in front of a crowd of 15,000 people, but how would I do in front of a crowd of 25,000 people? I don't know, I've never played in front of a crowd that big. But 15,000 I have, 5,000 I have, those were the two biggest crowds, and then 1,500, and after that, everything kind of drops off to a couple of hundred. But, uh, oh, get off the road. <laughs> Thunk. Stupid raccoon. Uh, well, that's what I'm flying, okay. I got to open it again. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, remember, I do have a cursed strata very in the, in, the, in the trunk here. So, that could have been... Uh, Raccoon tried to kill me tonight, just so you guys know. That's the dedication as a musician that I, I'm showing you today. I nearly got taken out by a damn raccoon. For you guys. For you guys. We put on a show for you guys. Like, how selfless is that? How selfless is that? <laughs> um, uh, what well, I think uh, I'll, I'll talk about just before I wrap up here. Uh, I'll do a quick pit stop <laughs> before I uh, go up the driveway and make a whole bunch of noise. Uh, that Anna girl, uh, she has a good stage presence. She told me I had a good stage presence today. You know, like, you know, kind of like good with the crowd and stuff like that. But she does too. Like, I would like to perform on stage with her just because I think she would be really fun to perform with. She gets off the stage and does like the, the you know, the fainting rock star acts. <laughs> you know, whatever. It was really funny. It was very cute. Um, but yeah, someone like that, I can imagine if I could get someone like that on stage. Uh, like I said, I would like to do the Cheryl Crow song with her. Uh, I'll play it and sing it, just whatever, no problem. If she could play and sing too, but uh, that would be really, really awesome. Two guitars and do that song, belt that out. Yeah, it's a cover song, whatever, but it would really be... I, I've never done a duet. Uh, the duets I want to do, uh, and I'll just wrap up with this. Uh, one is take a picture, Kid Rock, Cheryl Crow. And yeah, I'll do the Kid Rock part. Okay, uh, <laughs> um, uh, and the other one is Paradise by the Dashboard Light with um, Meatloaf. That one I've seen. I've seen one guy do it with a girl on stage, uh, just with a twelve-string acoustic, nothing else, and he, they nailed it. I'm like, that is brilliant. Uh, but that would take a lot. You, you have to work with somebody like that. And the problem I have is everybody lives over there. I live over here, right? That's like 45 miles from here, about 60 K, 60, 70 K from me. So, uh, it can be kind of, kind of difficult, but to have somebody that ha she has a, the right amount of stage presence that I think it would go over really re well with the crowd. And, uh, you know, why not? Right. Uh, a few other songs. I'm pretty sure there's a couple other um, time after time. You could always do that one. But I don't, like I said, I don't like doing a lot of ballads. Maybe one or two. Um, time after time would be really good. Uh, I think the other girl would probably be better for that one. Um, next to that, uh, what other ballad? Whatever. There's all kinds of good. Uh, I'm sure I'll think about 20 of them as soon as I shut the camera off. But yeah, I'm gonna go see if there's a raccoon stuck to my grill there. Again, I didn't feel any thump. But that, that I, 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 I'm sure I got his tail. <laughs> I'm sure I got his tail. Little bugger. I wooed him, but um, yeah. Yeah, so I got to go see if I got a raccoon stuck under my... Uh, he nearly killed me, stupid little bugger. I hope I didn't hit him. I like raccoons. I used to have a pet raccoon named Bandit years ago. So anyway, I'm going to go and see if I have to pull a raccoon out of my grill. But again, I didn't hear any thump or anything like that. But you never know. <laughs> you know three, uh, you know, uh, eight pound raccoon versus a uh, thirty two hundred pound uh, <laughs> lump of steel frozen down the road. Who knows what's going to happen? All right. Anyway, you guys have yourselves a great night. Can't wait till next week. Hopefully the weather holds and I can get some uh, more cool tunes out there. So I'm just gonna put my emergency brake on so I don't run myself over. Remember, there's a cursed violin in here. Bad things can happen. All right. Have yourselves a great night, eh?